All right, welcome back. So now we're going to talk about constraint Newton's method. And the idea is that in the previous uh, tutorials, we've been talking about how to solve unconstrained optimization problems. And in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to see how we can tailor Newton's method to address constrained optimization problems. All right, so first we go to the problem statement to see what is it that we want to solve. So again, this is our past problem statement where we have some function, some scalar function that we want to optimize. Yeah, and again, we start here and through an iterative procedure, we get all the way to the optimum. Now, the idea now is that we have constraints and these are in the form of this vector function. So here, what I'm saying is I can have many of these functions and each of them should be satisfied yeah in two dimensions what this would look like is that i have a line here and i want so i want my optimal point to lie in this line and to be basically as close as possible um, let's say to this point over here yeah so i'm going to choose the point in this line that has the best objective function yeah and again because this is in two dimensions we only have a line if we were in three dimensions, we could move anywhere in a plane. And if we have higher than that dimensions, we just have a, a hyperplane. Yeah, which, which can be thought of as just a, a full space. Yeah, like we know it now in 3D and higher dimensions. All right. So how do we solve this problem? So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to tailor or we're going to talk about how we can use the Newton method that we talked about in the previous lecture and apply to this kind of problem. And for this, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna define what's called a Lagrangian function, yeah? And this function is simply the objective function plus my equality constraints, but they are weighted by some, by some variable here, which we're gonna call the Lagrange multiplier. Now, this Lagrange multiplier has a, uh, has dimensions such that this product is a scalar product. Yeah. And you can think of this as a way of weighting. So, so this you can think of it as a weighted, um, a way of incorporating the constraints into the objective such that they are weighted. Yeah. And this lambda can actually take, take values from minus infinity to infinity. Yeah. And again, this we're going to use it further. Yeah. Okay. So the same way that if you remember, in the unconstrained case, our optimality conditions were the fact that the gradient has to be equal to zero. Yeah. So when our gradient was zero, if I gave you a point and I told you that was optimal, then you would check my gradient. And if that was equal to zero, then you would say, OK, I, I can believe you. So in the same way, the optimality conditions, so we won't prove this, but the idea is that the optimality conditions for the constraint optimization problem are these ones over here yeah and again the idea is if i give you some optimal x i actually have to also give you some optimal lambda yeah this variable that we defined over here and if i give you an optimal x and lambda pair then you you plug into these two equations so the first one is similar to the gradient condition of our unconstrained optimization problem the only thing is now we don't only have the gradient but we also have not only the gradient of the objective function, but we also have basically the Jacobian. Yeah. So the, the, the also the matrix of first derivatives of, of this set of functions here, uh, weighted by our Lagrange multiplier, and that has to be equal to zero. So this is basically a gradient condition, but now it's a gradient condition on our Lagrangian, and this has to be equal to zero. And also, of course, we need our equality constraints to be equal to zero to know that this is an, op an optimal point. Yeah. So again, the idea is that in the unconstrained case, we have that the gradient has to be equal to zero. And the equivalent of that condition, those conditions in the constrained optimization problem is that now the gradient, but of the Lagrangian, so this function over here has to be equal to zero, as well as our equality constraints have to be satisfied. And again, this is what I call a Lagrange multiplier. And this is just, you can think of it as a set of variables that we have to, to, to have now in 
such that we can actually solve this system. Yeah, because this is actually what we want to solve. Yeah, we want to solve such that we get an X and a lambda such that this both are equal to zero. And the idea is here that this gives us NX equations. This gives us NH equations also. So we have to solve a system of NX plus NH equations. And this is what I was alluding to earlier that we now not only need, so we want a square system, right? We want a system that has the same number of equations as of unknowns. And so then what we do is basically we have uh, NX uh, unknowns in X and also NH unknowns in, in lambda. Yeah. And the question is, can we apply Newton's method here? Yeah. And as I have been mentioning, few times before the answer is yes we can and there are two ways basically in which we can derive let's call it the Newton step in the constraint case yeah and if you remember I talked about when we talked about unconstrained I also talked about two interpretation of the Newton step one was a quadratic approximation of the objective function and the other was a first-order approximation of my optimality conditions about my gradients and we'll see that here we have the same thing actually. So first we'll talk about the how we can solve this by an approximate quadratic problem. Yeah. So we remember from the unconstrained case, this is what I was just talking about. What we would do in the unconstrained case is if you had a function f of x, what you would do is at every point you would have a quadratic approximation, so a second order Taylor approximation of, of this function over here. And you would solve this function with respect to delta x to find the, let's say, the optimal step size for this quadratic approximation. And we talked about that, that this was actually led to this uh, figure over here that came again from convex optimization from, from Boyd, that you have, uh, yeah, that you are basically approximating at every point your, your, your problem and solving, and that's how you got the Newton step. So the idea is that here we do something similar. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is we're going to approximate the objective function in the same way. So we're going to do a second order uh, approximation of our function. But now what we're also going to do is we're going to do a first order approximation of our equality constraints. Yeah. Something that I should mention in convex optimization, generally they as well, not generally in convex optimization, they assume that these are uh, linear equality constraint because we're assuming that we're solving engineering applications, particularly process engineering applications. We generally assume that this can be nonlinear. Yeah. Anyway, so we make a first order approximation. And now what we do, because we want to solve this problem, yeah, so this is basically some approximated problem of our original problem, is we construct the Lagrangian, yeah. So this L superscript L stands for the Lagrangian of the linearized problem. And what you can see is that this is the term for the objective. So this is this term over here, which is this linearized term over here, plus the second term for the equality constraint, which is this one over here. Again, this is in our case, the, the, the linearized part, and we have our Lagrange multiply over there. Yeah. So now we form the, the, the Lagrangian of our approximate problem. And then because we want to satisfy this gradient condition, what we do is we get the derivative of this term with respect to delta x, and we get this expression over here. Yeah, again, what we do is this term goes away, this term over here goes away, this term goes away, and uh, this term, well, th this whole term goes away, and then this term goes away also. And then we get this, this uh, which is the, the gradient of our Lagrangian, so we just obtained this optimality conditions, but for our approximate problem. We, of course, have to include our equality constraint, which again in this case are our approximate equality constraints, which are linearized. And now we want to solve this system. Yeah, because this system gives us the solution to our approximate problem. Yeah, and, and again, what we're doing basically is solving, is getting the optimality conditions for our approximate problem. And 
the same system that I just showed. Now I just put it in matrix notation. Yeah, so this multiplied by this, giving you this term over here, and this multiplied by this, giving you this term over here, which is again exactly the same as I showed before. And the idea is that solving this system gives you your xk, yeah, your delta x, which is the step that you're going to take for your Newton iteration. Okay, um, so now something else that I want to add, again, this is not super important, but I think it's a, it's a nice thing to know, is that basically once you find an, op so, so your Newton iteration, let's say that you start here and you make your way down and you get here, th this probably won't be the trajectory, but let's assume that. From here to here, it will only lie on, on uh, feasible points. Yeah, and why is that? Well, again, what you'll be solving is this system over here, or this approximate system. And once you satisfy all the constraints, this term will be zero. So that means this term will be zero. And the step that you'll be computing will be delta x times the Jacobian of your system of equations. Yeah. Now remember that this could be seen as a directional derivative, and that means that at every new step delta x, you'll be moving in a direction that does not vary uh, hx. And because hx is already zero, this also means that you will remain feasible from, from then on. Yeah. So this means basically that you're moving on the, so once you're feasible, you're moving on the null space uh, of, the, of, of your equality constraints. Yeah. Again, this, this is just an interesting fact. Uh, but, but not essential. All right. So again, we just talked about how to derive the Newton step for constraint optimization for approximate uh, using this uh, the the solution to the approximate quadratic problem. Now we're going to look at that, how we derive the Newton solution on the solution to an approximate optimality conditions. So again, first we're going to look at our um, uh, our unconstrained, so we saw this uh, on the last course. So we remember that our optimality conditions were this one. So it was simply getting the gradient equal to zero. We saw that we approximated our gradient equal to zero by a first order approximation, which meant that we get the Hessian over here, and that this would give us, uh, by solving the system, then we would get this delta x, which was a, a Newton step for the unconstrained problem. Now we're going to see how we do something similar to this, but for the constraint case. So here is where we basically apply. So when Newton basically derived the the the, the, the Newton or new or Newton Raphson for solving uh, systems of equations, he did it not for optimization, right? But for system of equations, and this is exactly what we're going to be doing here. So we see that what we need is to solve this system of equations, this whole system, which comprises nx plus nh equations. So what we do is we just redefine a new variable w, which is simply the, the, co the compilation of x and lambda. And what we want to solve is this residual function, which is simply these two put together, right? No, no, not sum together, but just put together as a vector. Each of them is itself a vector, so this will be just a very long vector. And we want to make this residual equal to zero for all its elements. So for all its nx plus nh elements. And again, if you remember from numerical uh, methods courses, this is the Newton's method, the Newton iteration. Yeah. And again, we've defined here our function, our residual function, and our, our variable, which is again just the, the compilation of these two. And what we do is we apply this to this system over here, which is basically saying the same as applying this root, method, uh, root finding Newton method to this system over here. And so what we get, so if we apply this to this system, we get this over here, yeah? And, and again, if, if you're not too sure, you can pa pause the video now, and again, you can see that this, th this term over here is nothing but 
and my optimality conditions applying the root finding Newton method, assuming this. Yeah. And then again, I'm going to express now this little system as a matrix system. Yeah. And we get to this one, this matrix. Uh, now, if you if if you pause it and look at what we saw before, you'll see that it's slightly different to the way we derive or the system that we had to solve to derive the Newton step. And you actually see that here we, del we get delta lambda instead of lambda directly. And the idea is that these still lead to essentially the same delta x. Yeah, so it doesn't matter how you solve them. Now, in terms of linear algebra, in general, they're equivalent or almost equivalent. And the structure is very similar. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter which way you do it. And just, just for the sake of mentioning, this is called the KK trima, the KKT matrix, and this is probably just a bit of general culture. There's there's a whole area of research on how to solve this matrix efficiently, because as you can imagine, the uh, constraint Newton met method is used a lot in practice. Yeah. So then how would you solve the system? So again, now you not only start with some point x0, but you also have to define some lambda, lambda 0. Yeah. And then you do this iteration until your residual is less than some small value. So again, you want these two terms to be very close to zero, right? Because this means that you're satisfying your optimality conditions. Then at every iteration, you solve this KKT system. Yeah, so you solve this KKT system over here. Uh, of, uh, evaluating this at your points xk and lambda k, whichever they are. And then you update your points and again solve your KKT system and and do this over and over again yeah until you reach some desired tolerance so you can see that this is actually essentially the same as the Newton method that we saw before yeah in the unconstrained case okay so now some some details on on, on the implementation and again these are more things for general knowledge one of them is that either approach one or approach two give similar structure and they can be solved equivalently efficiently Again, another thing is that assuming that you solve via the KKT matrix, this is a full area of study um, that goes into how to solve them efficiently. If you want to solve them not extraordinarily uh, efficient, but you know, do something a bit more intelligent, you would generally do some sort of LDL factorization uh, to solve it for some for small problems. Or you could also do some elimination. And these are basically the complexity that you were in in both cases. And the main takeaway is that this is used in practice. Yeah. And the same as we as I mentioned about the Newton method, there are full areas of study about this. But I mean this is enough so that you can actually, if you're interested, go and code it in your favorite programming language. Uh, and you would get a relatively nice uh, nice performance and a nice algorithm. Uh, and, and as for as future lectures, so we've just saw how to solve problems with equality constraints. And in the next lecture, what we'll see is how to actually solve problems when we have not only equality constraints, but also inequality constraints.